So to create our actual bird, we are in a C++ project. So we are going to use C++ as the backbone of our bird. On the content browser over here, you can see that there's this little folder called C++ classes, and then we can go into our Flappy Bird tutorial where there's already some stuff waiting for us. But inside of here, we're going to right click and then hit new C++ class to start the creation of our bird. Now, in this case, there's a variety of different things you could assign to our lovely friend and we are going to be choosing Pawn. The reason we're choosing Pawn is because we want to actually possess or control this bird. So we want it to be a Pawn. Once we hit Next, you're going to be able to name your bird. I am creative in naming it Bird, and then I'm going to create the class and wait for things to load. Now, once things load, you are going to have two files, a CPP file and a .h file. They're both going to be there in the coding thing that you chose as your default. I'm using Visual Studio 2022. Now, that being said, why are there two files here? I only created one thing. Well, it's important to remember the relationship between bird.h and bird.cpp. They are two halves to the same coin. .h files are header files, and they are basically a contract. At least that's how I was taught. You are going to outline the core functionality of the expectations you are setting for bird within the header file. This is going to be all of the things that you know the bird is going to do. Meanwhile, the CPP file is all of the actual code that is going to implement the contract that you put in the header file. So the header file is always, this is what I say I'm going to do, and I am agreeing that I'm not going to screw you over. And then the CPP file is where you actually code and make each of those things do what you said it was going to do. So now that we know what the difference between a header and a C++ file is, we are now going to talk about the header file in a little bit more detail. There's two major sections to our header file. We have the setup section, and we have the what do I do section. So the setup section is stuff like the constructor, which is called whenever an object of this specific type is made. We also have something like begin play, which is called when play begins. Now inside of the actual what do I do section, we are going to be able to create three different types of what do I do's. We have the public, which is already there, but we can also add a protected and a private section to give our header file a little bit more juice here. So what's the difference between public, protected, and private? Public can be called by anything anywhere at any time. It is basically open access. Protected are variables or methods that can be called by anything of this class or of any child of this class. So if we created a yellow bird and a red bird, and both of those new birds were children of our A bird class that we are working on right now, anything that we put in protected would be okay for both our current bird and all children of our bird. And then finally we have private, which is for my eyes only. This is where we're going to put things that we do not want other people to touch. Now, it's also considered good coding practice to you put all of your variables inside of private. If you want someone else to have access to those variables, you can set up getter and setter methods depending on the level of access you want people to have. So now with all that explanation out of the way, we are going to start building out our bird. And we are going to first give our bird some components that make the bird who it is. So to do this, we are going to basically set things up so that we can use our blueprint to tell us what they should be. So we're gonna set up the basic skeleton in code, and then we're going to get the rest of the information filled in when we create a blueprint based off of this in a little bit. So bearing with me for a moment, we're going to create three different U properties to dictate what different components are gonna to belong to our little bird here. We're going to make these private because we don't want anyone else to be able to touch our business. So to do this, we're going to create something called a U property. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our visibility. Now there's a variety of different things that we can put here, but I wanna draw your attention to something called edit defaults only. This is going to say that I'm going to let you see this in Blueprint, but I don't want you to be able to do anything besides set up my default value. This is very powerful when we want to set up what objects are being used, but we don't necessarily want to do anything else. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a category within the Blueprint that I want to store all of this stuff in, and I'm going to just call it Components. Now next I'm going to write the word Class. We use the word Class to forward declare what we're about to call so that we don't have to add the header file redundantly to both my header file and the C++ file. So this is basically just a promise that we will add the header file for whatever we're calling properly within our C++ file. Now in this case, I want to set up a capsule to dictate what hits my bird. And to do that, I'm going to call a U capsule component and I'm going to call it 
capsule comp. Now, what makes this different than any other variable that you will see called in normal coding is that we are creating what's called a pointer here. I don't wanna bog down this video's time too much by explaining what exactly a pointer is, but I will create a standalone video that explains pointers in a little bit more detail. Now, that being said, the only other thing that we need to create before we can go and actually see our bird in action would be the skin or the mesh that we want to have for our bird. So in order to make things a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to reuse a lot of what I just typed. So I'm going to copy it and then paste it onto a new line. And this time, instead of a U capsule component, I want this to be a base mesh. So I'm going to call a U static mesh component. And again, it's going to be a pointer, and I want this to be called base mesh. So now we have outlined the contract saying that I will have a capsule component and a base mesh. Now we're gonna go into our C++ file in order to give those life. Now we're gonna give those life inside the constructor because as I've mentioned earlier, this is called whenever an object is created and it's very important during creation to give all of the components life. Now in order to give our component life, we are going to have to assign it something. So we're going to call for our capsule comp and we're going to make it equal to something called create default sub object. Now all create default sub objects are going to have something in triangles and something in circle. So what goes in the triangle? Inside the triangle, we are going to put what we're creating. In this case, we already know that it's the U capsule component. And inside of our circle here, we are going to be putting what we want to call it. So what I wanna call this just, I don't know, capsule collider, let's say, perfect. The next thing we want to do is we want to give this basically order inside of a hierarchy. And this will make more sense once I show you the blueprint in a couple of minutes. But for now, I'm going to take something called the root component or the big boss, and I'm going to make it equal to our capsule component here. Now, what's interesting is you'll notice that we're getting this red squiggly underneath of this equal sign, and we're not really sure why. Of course, that's me being a little dramatic. I'm going to show you now the official documentation for you capsule component. Like I had mentioned earlier, we needed to forward declare inside of our header file to promise that we would properly set up the ucapsule component within this CPP file. How do we properly set it up? Well, inside of ucapsule component, it luckily tells us exactly what we need to include. We're going to need to take this line right here and we're going to need to drop that into our C++ file to basically say, I want to be able to use this file so I can use capsule component inside of my code. So I'm just going to take that, I'm gonna drop it right at the top here. And then just like that, you'll notice the red squigglies go away and there will be no error. Remember, it's very important to fulfill your promises. Now next, we're going to do the same thing for our base mesh. We're gonna set our base mesh equal to the creating the default sub object again. So I'll set it up the same way. We've got our triangles and we've got our circle. What goes in the triangle? Well, that's going to be our U static mesh component. And what goes inside of our circle? Well, that's going to be what we're going to call it. And let's call this just base mesh because I am not creative with variable names. And now we're going to give this some order in our hierarchy and we want to basically have an attachment to our capsule component, which says wherever the capsule component goes, I wanna go. And in order to do that, we are going to do base mesh and we're going to call the function of base mesh called setup attachment. Now inside here, we are going to be able to see what we need to give it. And in this case, we're going to set up attachment to our capsule component so that it is going to be the child of our capsule component. Now that is about all that we need to do to set up our bird. So I'm going to save all of my C++ here, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to return back to live code and build what we just built. Or I guess I should say compile what we just built. Now we can see that went through successfully, which means we did not experience any errors, which is great. Now, remember, this is the code representation of our bird. We are now going to create a visual representation of our bird. So in order to do that, I'm first going to be organized preemptively and create a new folder called Blueprints. Then I'm gonna go back into our C++ stuff here and I'm going to right click on our bird and I'm going to create a blueprint class based on bird. When I do that, I'm going to call it BP underscore bird because that's what I was taught in courses. Then I'm going to save this to my blueprints folder. Once this loads, you're going to notice that we have the capsule component that we named capsule collider and the base mesh that we called base mesh already here because that is what we set up inside of code. And exciting enough, we also have access to set up the capsule component 
and set up the static mesh. This is why we stated in code that we wanted to be able to edit the default values for our birdie. So what do we want our static mesh to be? Well, I want it to be my bird, but you can make it whatever you want. And since my bird would be absolutely massive, I'm just going to cut that in a quarter. But you'll notice when I click in quarter, it now looks even worse than it did previously. If I undo that and make it a normal proportional bird, I can now hit this little lock here, which says whenever I change one bound of scale, it will automatically adjust all the other bounds of scale and not create a monster. Now, next we're going to encompass this inside of our capsule component. And we can do that by adjusting the half height and radius here. So the height dictates how tall it is and the radius dictates how fat it is. And what we're going to do here is we're going to adjust all of these values so that everything works. Now you'll notice here that as I adjust the scale for my capsule component, it's also adjusting the scale for my bird. This is because that mesh that we set up is attached or a child to my capsule component and they are connected in that way. Now I'm not too fussy about what this is. I'm usually more player centric, so I'm going to set up this capsule component to be a little bit easier for everyone involved. So I'm going to basically make it inside, like notably inside of our bird, so that if there happens to be like, you know, the beak clipping through one of the pipes later, it's not going to spell the end of the world to our player. So I'm going to compile save, and then I can close that for now. And then what's interesting here is I can now drag this into the world and we can see our beautiful creation right there looking fabulous. Now, what we need to do next is set it up so that the bird actually is going to appear when we hit play. Because what happens now when I hit play is we become a human and we fall to our deaths. This is going to happen in two parts. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our camera to be the boss. And we can do that by clicking on our camera, going into the variables here, and then we are going to scroll into the auto player activation here. I want to automatically activate this for player zero so that when I start the game, I'm at least going to use this camera. You'll see this change right away because when I hit play, now I am watching out of my camera as the human being that I created plummets to their death. The next thing we're going to do is we need to change the default pawn that spawns when we hit play. The way that we can do that is we're going to hit edit, then we're going to go into project settings. Once this loads, we are going to go into maps and modes. Inside here, you get a lot of the different defaults, but we can see here that we have our default game mode set up right here. And if we click this little expander on selected game mode, we get to see all of the different default pawn classes that exist for our game mode. Now, if you're seeing that you cannot edit the default value for any of these selected game mode properties, it's because the selected default game mode is a C++ file. And that means you can't actually edit anything that would be considered one of those blueprint values. So what we can do to adjust this here is we're going to go and create a blueprint game mode that is going to be the boss. To do that, I'm just gonna go into content and I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class and create a game mode base. I'm going to call this birdie game mode. And then when I open this up, we can see that I can now adjust any of those things that I was talking about before such as our default class here, which I'm going to make our BP bird. I'm going to compile and save that. And then I'm going to go into my edit project settings once more. And once I go into maps and modes, I'm going to change my default game mode to birdie game mode. And then we can see that BP bird is our default pawn class. So now when I hit play, we can see the, the human is still falling. Well, what gives? Turns out there is a hidden extra layer that we have to account for. So what we're going to do is we're gonna click window and then we're gonna go into something called world settings. This brings up the settings for the level or the world that we're currently looking at. Inside there, there is a game mode override that is still set to our Flappy Bird tutorial C++ file. Now, this obviously isn't the default values, so we can see this little arrow that's saying, reset me to the default. If I click that, it'll go to none. That's fine, because we don't need a game mode override. So now when I hit play, we can see our bird in all of its glory waiting to jump when we set that up. 